Everybody's rushing to build MCP servers, but here's what nobody's talking about. What happens when you expose these servers to the internet? Without proper security, your AI tools become an open door for attackers. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to lock down your Spring AI MCP servers with OAuth 2, because in 2025, shipping unsecured AI endpoints isn't just risky, it's reckless. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Dan Vega, Spring Developer Advocate at Broadcom, and today we're going to have some fun taking a look at an article by my colleague, Daniel Garnier Moreau, and this is on securing Spring AI MCP servers with OAuth 2. So I thought it'd be a good time to kind of walk through this article, uh, look at some code, and lock down an MCP server uh, together here because I'm starting to read all kinds of articles on the internet about MCP servers getting exposed. It's just like a REST API, right? Like if we have uh, information that we don't wanna make public, we can't just put REST APIs out in the world for everybody to, to kind of find and explore. Uh, we would lock those down using Spring Security or some other mechanism, right? So today uh, we're gonna walk through this article. We're gonna talk about some of the things Daniel put in here and we'll kind of follow along with his article and lock down a weather uh, MCP server that's part of the Spring AI examples. Spring AI offers support for model context protocol, MCP for short, right? Um, authorization and security in MCP. I'm not gonna read this word for word. You can go through and do that. But there is um, a new uh, version of the MCP specification. If you want to, uh, he links to that. You can go through and read. Um, but really, this is about leveraging uh, the widespread OAuth 2 framework. So he says, we're not going to do a full review of OAuth 2. Again, if, you, if you're on the Spring AO blog, there's plenty of articles Daniel's gone through. Daniel also, also has a lot of videos out on the internet, um, particularly from conferences where he deep dives into some of the stuff. So I highly suggest uh, seeking out his content if you are looking for anything security related. I mean, it does a whole bunch of other stuff, but the security stuff is great. Um, so as a resource server, it must perform authorization checks on incoming requests by checking the authorization header. So the header must contain the OAuth 2 access token, which is basically representing permissions of the client. So uh, if you send a curl request to uh, mcp.example.com slash SSE, in our case, if we're running something locally, it'd be like localhost 8080 slash SSE, then you need to send the authorization header with the bearer and then a valid access token. So um, using Spring Security and Spring Authorization Server, we can easily add both capabilities to a Spring MCP server. So we have an MCP client. We're not gonna focus on the client today. The client could be any client. This could be a Spring app. This could be a Claude Desktop, a Visual Studio Code, IntelliJ, anything that has access to loading MCP servers, this could be a client. So we send a request access token to the server that has Spring Authorization Server. This will issue the access token, and now we can make MCP requests using that token. Uh, so there's a git with SSE, and yes, we can validate it, and if that's authorized, we can go ahead and access the tools that are available there. So here's what we're gonna do. In this example, we'll add OAuth 2 support to the sample MCP server weather MCP tool from our Spring AI examples. So I have that here. I have uh, downloaded this onto my machine. I've also made a couple of updates. I've updated it to Spring AI 1.0, which was released very recently. And so there, my, mine might be just a tiny bit different than this, um, but it's pretty much the same. So uh, once we have that up and running, what we wanna do uh, is go ahead, actually let's, um, let's, let me think about this. Let's go ahead and show this running that really anybody can access it without any type of security, and then we'll improve on that. So let me open up IntelliJ here. Okay, so here's the uh, MCP server, the weather server. Again, I just made a couple different changes to this, uh, mainly around uh, getting us up to uh, 1.0 of Spring AI. And if you look at this, uh, there's a weather service that hits api.weather.gov. 
It has uh, some tools in here that are made available. So, hey, I want to get a weather forecast for a specific latitude, latitude and longitude. Uh, I can also go ahead and get weather alerts for like a U.S. state. So I have this running, uh, but we need a way to test this. As I said, we need something. Uh, we need a client, and we're not going to focus on the client today. There's this really great tool. If you head over to modelcontextprotocol.io, for testing out your MCP servers. Uh, this is the MCP inspector. This is how you can go ahead and get started with it. So I'm going to go ahead and run that again. You see it's in my browser there, but it's actually not running right now. So let's go ahead and do this. And so that will start up on uh, 6274. And I'll just refresh this and it looks like it's there. So when that MCP server is running, I can go to localhost 8080 because that's the port I'm running on. And there's an endpoint, SSE. Uh, this is for server-side events. Uh, you can also use STDIO, but that's kind of running locally. The point of this is we're putting servers out in the public. Uh, so I'll, we're going to use SSE for an example here. So if I go ahead and connect to this, I can connect to it. There are some tools. I can go ahead and list tools. I can say uh, get alerts. So I want to get alerts for Ohio. And I can run this tool and nothing coming up. Maybe there's no alerts for Ohio. That'd be a good thing. There we go. California. Here's some weather alerts for California. So as is, when you download this particular project and run it, you should be able to use the MCP inspector tool to freely uh, get access to all the tools that are made available. What we want to do is lock it down, say this was like private sensitive data that we don't want anybody just uh, getting access to. We want to go ahead and lock this down with MCP. So um, the way that we're going to do that here, I'm going to bring this up on my other machine so I can kind of see it. And I'll be kind of copying through Daniel's uh, instructions here and explaining them as we're in the code. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we need to get the OAuth2 resource server and the OAuth2 authorization server. And I think it'd probably be pretty good if I get me off of screen. So let's go ahead and copy this. So we're going to get the resource server, the authorization server. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this for now. Let's open up our Palm. And here in our dependencies, I'm going to go ahead and add those. See if we can refresh this and make sure those dependencies are brought in, and they are. So then we need to configure the OAuth2 client in our application.properties so that we can request access tokens. Uh, this, as he says, is the simplest possible client. We can interact with the authorization server directly by making post requests. No browser is needed. And use the hard code credentials, uh, MCP client, and secret. So let's do that. Let's come over here into application.properties. I'm going to go ahead and add these in. You see we have the client ID of MCP client, uh, the secret of secret. And then we are uh, setting our auth authentication methods and our grant types. So this um, should be what we need to get going. Now, the last step for this is to enable the authorization server and the resource features. Uh, remember, we haven't set any Spring Security configuration yet, so it's going to kind of use all of the defaults. We want to override those defaults and uh, set up some configuration. So we are going to, um, let's just copy this. Uh, actually, no, we'll call it Security Config so I can copy all of this. And we'll go over, and I'll need to create a new class, so I'll create a Java class so called Security Config, right? Uh, configuration. Very fancy, Daniel. Uh, security configuration. All right, let's do that. Sure, let's go ahead and add it. And then I'm going to go ahead and add that code from there. And I believe that was like a, was that a static import? Yep. And that should give us this. All right, so. Um, here we're authorizing uh, requests. Any uh, request should be authenticated. Uh, we are using the authorization server. Let me just run back here and talk about this with Daniel's explanation. He is much better at explaining this than me. So uh, every request must be authenticated. Um, enable both Spring Authorization Server 
and Spring Resource Server. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, turn off CSRF, cross-site uh, request forgery, and MCP server is not designed for browser-based interactions and does not require CSRF. Where you do turn on cores, this is cross-origin resource sharing support, so we can demo this server with the MCP inspector. So if we did this like from a terminal, probably work, but because this is a browser-based request from the MCP inspector, uh, we turn that on to make sure it works. So let's uh, just go ahead and see if this can start up again. Okay, and it does. I'm gonna open a terminal here because Daniel's provided us with some curl requests. So I'm gonna copy this one. This should fail because we uh, have no, oh yeah, I don't need to copy all of that, right? Let's just copy this, Daniel. And then we'll make a curl request. Uh, the request returned 401, right? So um, that's what he said would happen. Now to use our MCP server, we need to obtain an access token first. We'll use the client credentials OAuth2 grant, which is used in machine-to-machine -machine or service account scenarios. So we'll make a curl request using this. Uh, oh, this thing is getting in my way. Let's see if that works. Uh, should work. And there's our access token. So we were able to make a request uh, as the user with the credentials MCP client and secret. Again, this is hard coded. When we get into like uh, kind of building this full out and taking a look at the client side, then we would add like um, user authentication and, and a whole bunch of stuff there. So, but this is just the MCP client and secret. But we get our token back, yay. So now we have a token. This means that um, based on this, so if we were to um, token type bear expi expires, if we were to go ahead and copy this access token, so let's see if we can grab just this. This is not gonna work, great. Right? I need that. So there's our access token. So now uh, if we go ahead and, uh, actually let me copy this first and then our access token. So now if we go ahead and copy this um, and then we need to um, put our access token in here. So if we go ahead and copy this. Now if we make a request to the server, we should not get that 401. We should be able to make a request um, and everything curl the quote. I don't know if that's not, that's weird. Okay, I had a weird error there. Let's see, um, oh, okay. That is, let's finish that off. Now, we're able to hit that uh, endpoint. We don't get a 401 unauthorized. So yay, so this is working so far. The reason I wanted to talk about the MCP inspector is it's also possible that we can use this token directly inside of there. So now I'm gonna grab this token right here and I'm gonna go back to the MCP inspector. Let's go ahead and reload this. All right, so now back in the uh, MCP inspector, um, if we try connecting, uh, we're getting an error. We can't connect. I wonder if this is because of authorization. So the header name is that. Um, the bear token is, uh, actually I haven't tried this before, so I don't know. I think we just need the token itself. Let's try that, and there it is. So now we can connect. We can go ahead and list our tools. Again, we can get alerts, and we can go ahead and provide a state. Oops, and we'll run this tool. Uh, no alerts in Michigan right now. How about California again? And why do you keep coming up? Um, but yes, we were able to get our alerts for that. So again, we were able to quickly go ahead and lock down our MCP server using OAuth2 uh, with just this little bit of configuration. So we're setting up the authorization server, the resource server, 
and turning off CSRF and turning on cores for that MCP example. So obviously there's a little bit more to this, but this is a very good starting point. I think this is something we all need to be thinking of, especially if you're putting these MCP servers out on the internet and you don't want um, kind of people just consuming them and getting access to your data. This is something very important. So as Daniel says in this article, the obvious next step is to update the MCP client and allow it to authenticate with the server using the authorization code OAuth2 grant. With this flow, users can log in with their own credentials, obtain user bound tokens, uh, follow more fine grain permissions, for example, we can set some roles-based access control. I know this is one of the questions people have been asking about, like, hey, how do I do some kind of roles-based security with these MCP servers? This is the first step. That is the next step. Uh, if you're interested, uh, I'll go ahead and see if we can't do a follow-up with that. Um, and I'll, I'll ping Daniel and see if he, he plans on having a follow-up with that. And if he does, uh, maybe we'll do that together, or maybe we can do a video like this together where he helps me out. So um, we'll also explore using an external OAuth2 authorization server for issuing tokens and only implementing the resource server capabilities in our MCP servers. So with security, there is always these kind of layers that we, we, we have to work with, right? Like trying to implement full-blown security right off the bat uh, can always be a little bit of a headache. Like, Security's hard, there's a lot that's going on. So we started here today with just kind of locking down our MCP server to uh, that MCP client in secret. Next step is let's allow that client to authenticate with the server. Another step after this is let's put the authorization server out there somewhere so maybe we have many MCP servers that need to authenticate. So cool, this has been a lot of fun. Um, I hope you learned something new today. Again, thanks to my friend Daniel for this wonderful article on securing AI MCP servers with OAuth2. I will leave a link to that in the description below. And if you learned something new here today, friends, you know what to do, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the Spring Developer YouTube channel, and as always, happy coding, friends.